That's probably why people wouldn't I don't want think to come so. to your show. You're right. embarrassing yourself. Gentlemen, you're a shame to the queer You know community. what? I'll tell you who's really embarrassing. <laughs> I'm not a member of the queer community, here, you stupid hard. sod. I tell you I'm not a member of the queer community. The person who ultimately about is the queer genuinely community. embarrassing himself. But, it, but the entire thing, the LGBTQIA+, the fact that there's more and more people who are coming under this particular... Uh, no, it's not a real thing. It's bullshit. It's total horseshit. And I mean, I'm just one of the things that's very annoying in this era is that there are just these steaming piles of horse shit in front of us all. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we're all meant to sort of shovel our way through them. I just don't have time. I and mean, I might pay somebody else to shovel the horse shit for me. But like, I just don't have time for this crap. I don't have time for people to keep adding letters to... I don't... Uh, my view has always been there's no such thing as a gay community anyway. And that's just the gays. Lesbians and gays don't get on famously, have very little in common. Uh, both are very suspicious of bisexuals, <laughs> have nothing to do with transgender. There is no bigger chasm in the world than gay men and asexuals. <laughs> None. <laughs> Literally. Like the idea that in a bar, in a gay bar, like, you know, you'd be like, Hey, you're hot. I'm asexual. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Do they have their own hookup apps where they don't meet? Um, there's just nothing in common. It's an app that keeps you as far away from other people yeah. as possible. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. exactly. And um, <laughs> keeps people's clothes on. Yeah. And, and then there's just then there's one that's like uh, the, the queer one. Well, queer, as far as I can see, is only... I did a bit of this in Madness of Crowds, but... It only means either, ooh, look at me, I'm fascinating. No, you're not. You, you dyed your hair purple, you're boring. Um, or it's, um, I'm straight, but I want a bit of the intersectional pie, so I'll go like, oh, I'm queer. There was a guy at Oxford who was teaching who said that, and he was just like, oh, oh, one of my students came over and said, it's so nice to see myself represented, you know, by a lecturer. Uh, and I think this guy like painted his nails or some <laughs> crap like that. And uh, he, he's a straight guy, he's married to a woman. You're talking about queer. And queer mm. used to be an insult uh, to gay people. It still is as a, an insult to gay people. And then it's appropriated by some straight guys and girls because they think it'll make them interesting. Find another way to be interesting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it's sort of grotesque. Yeah, the, the, uh, the, uh, the alphabet people stuff doesn't really interest me. I just say, you know, get on with their lives. They've bored me enough, you know. But there's also the fact as well that, do you not... And I've spoken to quite a lot of gay men about this, and they all mutter under their breath that so they actually find it profoundly irritating with the queer thing, where they go, if you do blackface, that is seen as the most heinous form of racism. Unless you're Justin Trudeau. Yeah, unless you're Justin Trudeau, in which case it's method. But, um... <laughs> but that being the case, if I come out and go, I'm queer, and, you know, I've never even had any form of sexual interaction with a man, that's fine. Yeah, queer face is fine. Yeah, queer it's like, it's like queer face. Queer face is fine. Yeah. You can pretend to be a woman and it's not insulting to women. You know, I don't agree. I think it's very insulting. But uh, I can't spend any more of my life being upset by morons. Yeah. Just uh, particularly attention seeking morons. Look at me, look at me. Yeah, I've got other things to do. There's books I haven't read. Priceless. Absolutely priceless. Morsels, tidbits. From Douglas Murray. I mean, <laughs> the fact that, you know, piles of steamy horseshit that needs to be shoveled. And then to basically say, he doesn't even have time for that. So maybe he's going to have to hire people to shovel these piles of horse crap, this horse manure out of the way. All this BS, what I used to call the verbal diarrhea that emanates from so much of these intersectionality communities from the LGBTQIA MOUSE. I mean, take a look at the shows that are out there that weave this LGBTQIA MOUSE theme into every typical situation that occurs. Give you an example. Look at what happens when you watch the ladies of the view, or what I affectionately like to call the rear view. Now, here are some ladies. Whoopi Goldberg, who has culturally appropriated a Jewish name 
to become Jewish. I don't even know if she's a practicing Jew or if she just picked out the name because she thought it would help her out being a black person with the Jewish surname. But if anybody else were to, if a white person were to do that, immediately they would be hit with name appropriation, culture appropriation, race appropriation, religion appropriation. Another fact in point, Sonny Hostin, race trader, race baiter, race hater. She's got the triple crown of racism. She wins it every single time, hands down. Cultural appropriator, name appropriator. Her name is Ascension Cummings. But change the name to Sonny Hostin. Anybody else does that? They're going to be labeled. And, who are, and who's going to do the labeling? All these so-called communities out there that are fixated on intersectionality, fixated on race, fixated on ethnicity. As Douglas basically said right there, there are differences within those communities. They don't even get along together. Yet, the letters of the alphabet are basically strung together to make it seem as if this is one cohesive community, one cohesive weird society that's all on the same page when it really, you know, is not. I mean, it's just the fact of the matter, folks, is that when Douglas says that he doesn't pay attention to these anymore, he doesn't have the time, I think he's just doing a one brush off or a brush off basically and maybe saying it facetiously because the problem is this is what we are going to be facing for the indefinite future for a long, I mean, who knows how long. I mean, transgenderism is just starting to put its tentacles, its cancerous tentacles into society. And in some places, that cancerous tentacle of transgenderism, the church of transgenderism, as I say, not only has it entrenched into the body, into the host, which is society, but it is starting to seed there as well. That's what's going on. It's starting to metastasize. And that's what's happening. The met it's metastasizing. The cancer is spreading. Now, in some places, it is being fought and fought well. And the fight is going, and the tentacles, you know, the that, that spread is sort of abating. But there's a lot of places, folks, a lot of places where it's not. And it is going on strong. And these groups... These communities, alphabet communities, are doing huge damage to the society. They're doing huge damage, especially the children. I mean, look at what's happening when we actually have doctors, psychiatrists, psychologists, counselors, social workers actually coming out in favor of literally chemical castration of young children because a young child feels like there's something different. They feel like they're something else in their body. They feel like a girl in a boy's body. They feel like a boy in a girl's body. They feel like a girl and a boy in their body. And they're literally trying to take the rights away from parents and put them those rights to go to the state so the state can take over because they feel the parents are not doing a proper job. But no, the state knows better. The child knows better. Why is it that, for example... A child can't get a tattoo in many states under the age of 18 
But if they want to do a top surgery or a bottom surgery or any other type of surgery that would be a removal or an addition to their body under the age of 18, now that's perfectly fine. But tattooing isn't. These are questions that are asked when you ask people a question. They say, oh, that's different. What's so different about that? And that's where, you know, Douglas comes out and others. And we've got to literally, you know, come out there as a breath of fresh air and to basically point out these absurdities, these hypocrisies, and continue to point them out each and every single time. That's the only way we're going to win this battle, folks, this cultural battle for the soul of the culture war to be on our side. We are literally battling for the cultural soul of the society we want to live in. That's so true. Appreciate the take time to watch. You've been watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I've been your host. My name is Dr. Nasser. If you haven't done so already, we'd love you to subscribe to the channel, like, share, and follow us. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Take a look at our other videos above and below. My final thought as always, when you're right, you're right. And when you're left, you're wrong. Until next time, folks, take care and stay safe.